good day to everyone so uh, this is uh, saurabh from pune india and we have with us aditi from sweden stockholm so we are moving on to the second episode of the clinical research talk series so in this particular episode we are going to talk about regulatory aspects of clinical trial so when i say regulatory aspect it means all the rules and regulation that govern the conduct of clinical trial in this particular session we are going to talk about the regulatory aspects of united states the european union the indian regulatory market as well as the african uh, regulation that govern clinical trial by talking about these particular regulation we will get a comprehensive idea that which are the rules that govern clinical trial and what are the different aspects of it so before starting the session i would also like to inform you that this is a collaboration between three youtube channel so the first one is the alpha to omega which is uh, run by aditi so it talks about uh, a lot of statistical analysis machine learning and use of uh, various statistical analysis methods uh, to process a, a data in particular manner which she will add expertise to these sessions the other youtube channels are clinical aim research and clinical research x360 so these channel also provide you with uh, various clinical research topics and understanding so let's start uh, today's session yeah so hi so i'm just going to give a overview about uh, the different kind of regulations and why these regulations are there and of course we have regulations within clinical research to ensure uh, standardization quality and safety primarily to the study participants and also uh, to ensure the integrity and accuracy of the data and make it scientifically sound uh so the main regulatory agencies uh that uh, uh that govern clinical trials are the food and drug and administration pharmaceutical and medical devices agency european medicine agency and central uh, central drugs standard control organization uh, that govern clinical trials on a national and as well as international level uh so these general uh, prin the general principles governing clinical trials are uh, based on the international council of harmonization good clinical pr practices which is short uh, which can also be called ich dcp for short yeah um, so let's moving on uh, from that yeah so here i also this i think anything any clinical research talk is always incomplete behind without mentioning the historical milestones and the historical perspective though i'm not going to cover this in detail but i just want to mention that uh, you know the nuremberg trials which were conducted during the holocaust as well as the incorrect uh, tuskegee syphilis study in 1932 were the two trials that really brought upon the need to have ethical principles uh, for clinical trials and uh, the neuropen trials were the primary starting point to why uh, the ics gcp came into place though the gcp was formed in uh, 1964 and uh, this uh, formulation of the jcp since it's a global rule they ensure the safety efficacy and the higher quality of the clinical trial on a worldwide worldwide pers perspective yeah so of course these are the golden uh, rules of jcp uh, which which govern the clinical trials of the entire world so the it puts a lot of stress on the ethical uh, standards of the clinical trials as well as the uh, the fact that the benefits of the clinical trial should outweigh the risk and the safety should be of primary importance and in enough information should be available as well as the fact that the trial has to be scientifically sound as possible and the quality should be assured so these are the 13 principles which are uh, readily available on a global standard yeah yeah so this is a bit about the global market insight and as you can see this is the global pharmaceutical market uh, with northern america taking the taking the largest share followed by asia pacific as well as the european market and latin america 
and Middle East and Africa, though they have only 3% of the market share, but they have uh, quite a large population, as well as a lot of infectious disease are prominent in Africa. Um, and here, the world leader of uh, clinical trials are United States of America with 51% of clinical trials which are conducted in USA. And Japan is swiftly gaining leverage, which can be included in the Asia-Pacific market. Uh, and one of the reasons, unfortunately, is that the fact that the, they have a growing number of elderly population, which make it a place for conducting clinical trials in uh, diseases related to aging and senescence. Yeah. So now uh, moving on to the regulations that uh, come out of the United States. So first and foremost, let me tell you that United States uh, was the first country to introduce any kind of regulations or laws to the pharmaceutical products. And uh, through those efforts, the Food and Drug Administration was born. And it is the premier agency which approves the clinical trial and monitors the public health in the United States. And these regulations or the clinical trials in uh, USA are considered to be very stringent and therefore uh, a lot of medications takes a lot of time and uh, essentially US is the leader uh, in rules and regulation of the clinical trial around the world and it has also uh, contributed significantly into the rules and regulations which were later adopted by various countries also. And uh, I would like also to talk about the submission process for the new drug applications as well as the investigational uh, new drug application is uh, quite stringent uh, because there is a certain focus on the public health safety. Okay, so when it comes to clinical trial, there is a conception or rather a misconception that it is focused only on the uh, use of medication on the human subject. But uh, you have to understand that safety is the utmost priority in clinical trials and the office of uh, generic drugs uh, even when the patent expires there are there are genetic drug trials so in that uh, they apply very stringent rules and regulation due to which it makes very difficult to get approval from the u.s markets that is the thing also uh, the standards for safety and security drug are kept very high the u.s regulations and that is the reason why FDA uh, is known for their heavy focusing on clinical trial monitoring systems. And essentially, it helps uh, paving way towards more safety of the clinical trials uh, rather than just focusing on the efficacies. So this was, uh, in general, the rules and regulations of the United States. Now, coming on to Indian regulation for the clinical trial. So the, the foundation of the Indian regulation uh, of the clinical trial lies in Drugs and Cosmetic Act 1940s followed by Drugs and Cosmetic Rules of 1945 and recently the Indian regulations underwent uh, amendment and these were very progressive changes in terms of new drugs and clinical trial rules which are famously known as NDCT rules 2019. So in that rule uh, one of the most critical aspect was the Clinical Trial Registry of India which is an effort by Indian Council of Medical Research. So you cannot conduct any clinical trial in India until and unless you have registered in a central directory. So there was no uh, registry uh, per se uh, till uh, this time. And now it is being made mandatory uh, by the Indian Regulatory Authority, DCGI. So that is a very good uh, effort. Along with uh, India is also a signatory of ICA GCP. So we also have a focus on the quality assurance and safety uh, aspects, the ethical aspects in terms of uh, the ethical concerns. Also, when it comes to Indian regulatory uh, market, the new amendment bought a uh, Sugam portal. So Sugam portal is generally uh, used for submission of SAE. So earlier it, it used to happen that the documents were physically printed and, signed and then shared to the central agency in New Delhi. And then it was to and fro from that. But the government has also digitized uh, and kept it on a single portal. So, which uh, you, takes precedent from the clinical uh, trial safety reporting methods and it has uh, made monetary clinical trials way more safer and way more efficient. And uh, finally, uh, it can be said that there is a revolution in Indian clinical trial industry and it is moving in the right direction. 
in terms of the automatic approval uh, which means that even in 30 days you don't get any response from the indian regulation uh, regulatory agency it is considered to be approval so these kind of uh, automatic approval even uh, essentially highlights the binding of the government to follow certain timelines so that is a very positive for the industry as well as the speedy review and response of the approvals so this is a very good thing for the industry and the indian government has also focused on streamlining digitization and globalization of the indian regulatory itself so the regulatory agency in india along is rapidly digitizing and also considering the safety aspects of the clinical trial so essentially we can say that uh, the indian regulatory is not only at par at the global regulatory but also following footstep and in some aspects such as sugam portal and ctr are even leading to the united states so when it comes to population uh, paradigm so there uh, there is india china and the other uh, populations but uh, when it comes to regulation it has always uh, been that the west would lead and the rest of the world would follow but uh, the asia pacific market is also taking the lead and understanding the importance of the clinical trial and uh, india being the pharmacy of the world has highlighted the same and has even highlighted by taking concrete steps in terms of the regulation in the ndct 2019 so the indian regulation has become more stronger so now uh, we'll see the european regulations and i'll hand it over to aditi yeah uh, so one thing about the the european regulations is that first of all uh, the approval of an ind and nda is always regulated by the european medicine agency Uh, in in which governs the regulations of the entire european union even though individual member states have their own medical agency but they still have to go up in accordance to the uh, me european Medi medicine agency and as short for also called ema for short now one of the things and changes that the ema has brought brought upon is that they have made a central portal which is the eu a clinical trial registry and one of the main goals behind this is to ensure the uh, harmonization and standardization of clinical trials across the european union and uh, now uh, uh, the ema has made it mandatory to uh, publish all the clinical trial studies and, and the data despite even if it has failed even if the trial is not successful even if it has no outcomes but it still has to be published in order to ensure transparency and now the ema ema is focusing on uh, further harmonization across the eu and uh, this it is also focused on safety reporting so uh, there are multiple agencies which are responsible for safety reporting and they want to go in accordance to the world health organization and for the ema safety reporting and post marketing surveillance has become as important as the clinical trial and uh, the as, as mentioned before there And the one rule that EMA has followed that there has to be transparency and standardization across all the member states of the European Union and the European uh, and the European Economic Area. Yeah. And I think right now I I would like to introduce a little bit about African clinical trial harmonization because I feel that a lot of the time this continent has been neglected a lot, and even though the, a lot of infectious disease research comes from Africa or uh, comes from the African continent, uh, so now the Pan African Clinical Trial Registry has. is an is an initiative which harmonizes all the clinical trials within africa so here it is a registry which makes information regarding studies trial design and other aspects uh, accessible accessible to the african continent now this wants to be a comprehensive database of all the planned ongoing or completed trials within the whole continent and this is a very good initiative to harmonize the entire continent uh, uh, and all the clinical studies and there's also another an initiative uh, of the african vaccine Regis regulatory forum which is the 
in which is the national regulation authority and ethics community for the entire continent so as well as as mentioned africa is a hotbed of research for infectious disease but in there is a hope for a future that it will be the hotbed of clinical research in general but the current drawback is that often times in the african member states uh, in the african uh, continent uh, they still don't have the level of infrastructure that is often needed to conduct sophisticated clinic, clinical trials but as time progresses i uh, there is a hope to see this improve so uh, this is uh, sort of and uh, you want to talk about yeah, yeah yeah so just i was saying that uh, till now we have seen uh, the the regulation governing the clinical trials in us india europe and also africa and uh, the thing is uh, you might have uh, thought that uh, wouldn't it be easier to have a single uh, rules regulation can be uh, applied all over the world so the thing is there is uh, such a convention in the ICA gcp which uh, harmonizes a uh, biggest uh, market and uh, these are the highlights of it so the thing is uh, the intention behind uh, that is to bring expertise from both the regulatory authorities and india uh, and in the sorry industry which means that uh, there there are uh, various markets uh, and there are uh, various pharmaceutical company in those particular market so bringing both together on a single platform and deciding to harmonize the thing in order to reduce the cost of medication reduce the uh, efforts because a lot of time it used to happen that uh, a particular drug is Uh, getting approval in the united state and the same drug has to uh, come to india and again conduct clinical trial and get the approval but what if we have a single or central guideline which can make the entire uh, conduct of the clinical trial acceptable to the other regions at, as well so that was the initiative uh, by ich and even uh, today although uh, i can say a lot of countries including india have ratified uh, the icgcp convention but when it comes to following the same we can see there are discrepancy uh, across the world so if we do that and streamline that it can be a very good help not only to clinical research industry but the entire pharmaceutical industry by reducing the cost of the medication second thing is uh, the guidelines which uh, are designed uh, are obviously science based and there should be consensus driven because Uh, we know that us leads the uh, guides uh, guidelines and the regulations but when it comes to african continent as we have seen that we have regulatory agency or the registry for a one particular country for example the ctri in india but when it comes to africa there is uh, not that much of funding plus uh, the clinical trial scenario there is just starting up so the same kind of guidelines are application to uh african without consistent that uh, can be a problem so that has to be taken care of the third thing would be the following of a clear and effective management process so although we all follow the uh, gcp conventions but when it comes to management there are different challenges in different countries the challenges in us might not be the same as in africa or india so that is the thing also uh, when it comes to close collaboration between the parties uh with comparable uh, regulatory and technical capability so that can be harmonized for example the initial signatories of ic gcp the europe uh, fda us and uh, japan they uh, can really harmonize that particular uh, regulation when it comes to other countries such as uh, even india and china which almost is to uh, is one third of the entire global population so what if the regulatory agencies of this particular country could sit together on a single table and make ic gcp that particular platform on which the there can be a consensus between all the countries there can be difference of opinion but when it comes to uh, pharmaceutical medicines vaccine so it does not differentiate between different countries and ethnicities it is uh, a global aspect to safety so that can be close collaboration can be focused on next thing is uh, the regulators are uh, committed to implement the icchs guidelines but that commi- that commitment has to be also seen in practicality when it comes to implementing that guidelines 
and acceptance in other regulatory markets because there is a lot of skepticism of a particular drug uh, approved in indian market and directly going to us market so if there is a method or uh, if there are regulators which are committed of implementing the same guidelines all over the world then we can uh, reduce uh, that particular uh, regulatory agencies efforts and finally uh, these global platforms also brings critical tools to conduct clinical trial because i can clearly see that when it comes to united states they are more uh, moving forward in terms of digitization of the clinical trial in terms of having sophisticated software to manage clinical trial data and i can also see uh, in india there are still uh, clinical trial which are using paper based uh, clinic uh, case report forms so in an era where uh, our data is quickly entered into a digital format and where it is quickly processed and stored in the world of 5g's so can't there be an a global effort a common global platform where we can design a a piece of software or a, a portal which could essentially be available to the underprivileged countries or the underprivileged markets so if such kind of global efforts and platforms uh, are used and the tools are used it could really help in harmonizing the uh, ethos in, due to which ic gcp started and uh, ich also uh, remains current by revising the process and governance but when it comes to uh, having uh, implementation and ratification of those particular uh, conventions then it is a cause of concern because these uh, are just advisory laws but not mandatory so everyone can be signatory to particular convention but when it comes to ratification and application uh, applic uh, applying them uh, strictly then i think it should be a collective effort uh, what do you think about the saditi yeah about and i wanted i i mean we focused a lot on harmonization and yeah, yeah. we focused a lot on uh, you know we focused we had given an, a lot of focus on the fta and uh, india and we then after that we spoke about harmonizing uh, in terms of the european union and african uh, continents uh, continent but i also had a, i mean i was wondering why is india Uh, you know there you know india's governed by cdsco and then japan has its own icf gcp so why as asia pacific are we not focusing on harmonization like the eu and africa are uh, see as as per my understanding and experience in clinical trial is uh, the thing is us is currently uh, at the leader in convention and rules and the europe as well as the uh, japanese uh, regulatory authorities they are the initial uh, members who thought of uh, harmonizing everything but when it comes to indian uh, market or even asian market there is uh, china so there are difference of opinion and there is different challenges of applying the same system or the same tools and the same guidelines because the thing is uh, i i observe some practical uh, dissimilarities because when it comes to uh, using certain tools for example uh, uh, there is a friend of mine who works in clinical trials in us he is not using paper ics he is directly given a uh, ipad and these crcs enter the data directly and that data is uh, immediately uploaded to the cloud and they can directly process that data so that is the level of technology they are using but to use the same technology in india where uh, you also have to have reliability of the internet connections plus uh, infrastructure issues are there plus uh, when it comes to softwares so uh, the cost of using even the oracle by uh, any small mm -hmm. sponsor they still have to pay that much fees so us can say that we are moving towards a digitized uh, digitization but when it comes to on ground reality so i am talking about indian challenges now think about the african challenges yeah where there is uh, there cannot be digitization directly from the world go there 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 are still in a process of uh, harmonizing the guidelines let alone the uh, processing of data 
that is the thing plus the most critical aspect according to me is the trust on the data because uh, everyone has their own opinion on the data as we know that yeah. uh, even the chinese yeah. have uh, their uh, concern on sharing of the data and accepting the regulations of the other countries so i think uh, asia is lacking because uh, if you see uh, the indians and the chinese these are very two big uh, people china is expertise uh, they are having expertise and the world relies them in terms of the api and when it comes to production of the vaccine and other uh, affordable medication they rely on india yeah so the reliability of india and chinese market over the world is tremendous even that we saw in covid 19 also the india used to pro- produce vaccine and then the rest of the world used to get that so india and china should not only be the production factories but they should also get a seat on the table to discuss their concern and then based on a collective consensus we can come up with the guidelines because uh, you can see icgcp has very sophisticated members in terms of us japan and uh, europe but uh, as we are uh, we <laughs> uh say that we are a third world country it is not a third world but the thing is we have third world challenges yeah okay that, that that's and true yeah exactly so to counter those challenges with the uh, europe africans europeans have to accept that these are legitimate challenges and we are going to find a way out of it because uh, as far as india is concerned i can say that we are no longer asking anyone for validation we are asking seat on the table may that be in the uh, un security council or any other platform because the thing is we can produce quality medication and uh, export to all around the world but when it comes to guidelines so we would also like the united states the europe and japan to consult us or to have uh, india china and other uh, asia even africa on the table because if if we don't do that then we cannot say that we are using a global guidelines so i think that uh, these are some of the uh, critical aspect due to which we cannot harmonize the guidelines although we uh, all countries will sign the icf gcp convention but until and unless we collectively sit on a single table and uh, discuss all the grievances mm-hmm. so that okay. is the challenge okay I mean, so okay. So we've had a lot of interesting uh, aspects and a lot of opinions on something that's supposed to be very straightforward because regulatory affairs that way is quite straightforward. But the more you go into it, we realize it's not so straightforward as exactly. as we thought. And uh, the next video we are planning is something also very interesting, very. Uh, uh so we are thinking or uh, we are uh, to in the talks for a video on clinical data management in terms of uh how it is managed processed what are the important statistical tools for this and as well as the role of machine learning in clinical data analysis and exactly uh, so yeah. uh, i mean i'm sorry to cut you aditi but i just want to tell all the viewers uh, and uh, people who are listening that uh, we are going to talk about uh, not only how the data is generated but how the data is processed because in clinical trial there are thousands and thousands of subjects and each subject generates a tremendous amount of data so uh, aditi is currently working in machine learning so uh, in statistical analysis so she is going to essentially show us what are the cut- cutting edge technologies which can be used to process the data yeah. and that is essentially falls under the purview of clinical data management as i understand yeah yeah adit yeah i mean in, in the world of machine learning in the world of data processing you know the more data you have it the better it is so data is equal to gold but then we will go more in detail uh, when we have our uh, session which should be next week and we are really we've been really looking forward to the session and we're gathering a lot of information so that we can present our viewers with that so i'd like to conclude with that and um, i'm really excited for the next session personally what about you saurabh are you really looking so forward I'm, I'm to that i'm very much excited because i being a clinical research professional want to know what happens to the data how is that data processed what are the cutting edge technology because uh, i get fascinated when you talk about uh, machine learning artificial intelligence 
intelligence statistical analysis but until and unless i see and yeah. a person like you who is working uh, into it i am really excited for the next session yes so, uh, so we, we i think that's a good conclusion and uh, we hope we uh, can generate the same excitement amongst our viewers yeah so so we'll see you next week and uh, thank you for watching and listening to this uh, particular session so stay tuned we are going to come up with very exciting content and uh, thank you everyone thank you and thank you for listening and watching